Oh, the advantage of fresh is absolutely the taste. I can't tell you how many people have come in this store and said, oh, I don't even like blueberries. And I will say, will you try some of mine? And when they do, their eyes light up and they go, oh, these are good. Like, yes, because they are fresh, because we just picked them yesterday. We've been to a lot of amazing places here on A Fork in the Road. We've traveled all over Georgia to explore the fascinating and ever-changing world of agriculture. But today, we finally get to meet royalty. Blueberry royalty. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my I'm David Zelsky, and this is the Fork in the Road podcast, presented by Georgia Grown and the fine folks at Georgia Public Broadcasting. Each episode, we feature stories from Georgia's farmers, fishermen, merchants, artisans, chefs, and others who help provide Georgia Grown products to folks in the Peach State and beyond. Today, we venture to the southeast corner of the state in the deliciously named Bacon County to visit the city of Alma. The city is spelled A-L-M-A, that would be Alma, but I've been told and heard that it's pronounced more like Alma. Pull into the town of Alma, population of over 3,400, and the first thing you'll see is a water tower adorned with the town's name underneath a trio of juicy-looking blueberries. That's because Alma boasts the title of Blueberry Capital of Georgia. The city leads the way in blueberry research, and each summer they host the Georgia Blueberry Festival with a variety of blueberry-themed events, including a 5K fun run and a blueberry car and truck show. And there's one little shop in Alma that proudly represents the city's title. I am the owner, founder, operator, maid, cook, everything. You left one out, the queen. Oh, the queen. Yes, I'm the blueberry queen. Yes. <laughs> That's Ann Wilds. She's the proprietor of the Blueberry Barn. And they don't call her the blueberry queen for nothing. She started this shop a little over 10 years ago to fill a big need in her small town. So, the name the Blueberry Barn. Yes, the Blueberry Barn came out of the fact that I just thought that was a cute name. Blueberry Barn. Somebody else had already had the blueberry patch or the blueberry basket. So I said, well, what's left? The Blueberry Barn. So nine years ago when I started looking for a place to rent, I walked into this little place and it's all wood. It has a tree stump up here for the lights. But the thing that caught my attention was this door. As soon as I walked in and I saw this barn door, I said, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. So I Ann says her entry into the blueberry world was a higher calling. Well, to be perfectly honest, the Lord had been dealing with me for quite a while to open a store. And I was a school teacher, taught high school business for 17 years, and I got burned out, as a lot of teachers do. And then the Lord provided the 4-H position. So I just moved over. It was the 4-H agent here in Bacon County for 14 years until my retirement. Uh, and that was those were just wonderful years. That's when I really... And just so you and I are on the same page, here's a quick recap of what exactly 4-H is. 4-H is a U.S.-based network of youth organizations. The 4-H's stand for Head, Heart, Hands, and Health. Administered by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, 4-H's mission is positive youth development, mentorship, and education. It aims to connect public school education with hands-on practical experiences of rural life and emphasizes the value of learning by doing. The 4-H pledge goes as follows. <clears throat> I pledge my head to clear a thinking. No, I don't know why I turned British. <laughs> All of that in. Okay. <laughs> I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living. For my club, my community, my country, and my world. There are more than 6 million 4-H kids across the United States alone, and it stretches to 70 different countries. School teacher Ann Wilde's time working with 4-H kids, along with her husband Albert's already established career, 
were her pathways into the blueberry business. Those were just wonderful years. That's when I really got involved in the blueberry industry because my husband grows blueberries. And I really got, I got to meet the growers. I had 4-H'ers that did blueberry projects. I just love working with the 4-H'ers. And, and with each kid, you, you do a different project. And so I learned so much and I grew so much and learned so much about blueberries and what was involved. Because being an extension, of course, we dealt with farmers all the time in blueberries. So when I retired, it just seemed like a logical step to open a blueberry store in the blueberry capital because there wasn't anything here. It's hard to imagine, but the way the blueberry industry is, they pick them, pack them, and ship them out. They're gone. And people would come to the blueberry capital of Georgia expecting to find little tents on the side of the road and people selling blueberries. Well, it's not that way at all. In fact, you can't even find blueberries. They're not, they're not available. Even though Alma is the blueberry capital of the state, before the blueberry barn, the experience for traveling tourists was limited to blueberry fields, murals, and that water tower. People wanted fresh Georgia Alma, Georgia blueberries, and so it just seemed a logical shift for me to come over here and open the blueberry barn and sell blueberry products. So that's how it started. I, I just started selling nothing but blueberries, and I would sell blueberries from our farm here. And then it began to expand some because uh, we had the Georgia Grown program start up, which is just fabulous for our state. And when it comes to blueberries, the fresher and more locally sourced the better. Oh, the advantage of fresh is absolutely the taste. I can't tell you how many people have come in this store and said, oh, I don't even like blueberries. And I will say, will you try some of mine? And when they do, their eyes light up and they go, oh, these are good. Like, yes, because they are fresh, because we just picked them yesterday, packed them last night. They're in the store today. You can't get any fresher than that. And that, that, is number one. You eat them fresh, you're getting, if you, you eat them from your area, you're getting them as fresh as you can get them. And fresh is always better than shipped over or flown over or boated over, whatever. It's always better to get something from your area. The Blueberry Barn carries all sorts of items which are good for both the stomach and the nose. Just don't get them mixed up. When you walk in, I call it blueberry heaven. It just smells so amazing. And I love, I get used to it being here every day. But when people walk in and they go, oh, it smells so good. I'm like, yes, I still got it. So the, it's the smell that catches them. And you can have that smell at your house. All you have to do is buy a candle. These are the candles that smell so good. And I wish your viewers could actually smell that. Those are not real blueberries, so don't eat but it smells good enough. <laughs> no, it smells good enough to eat. I have blueberry coffee. I have blueberry tea. People cannot believe. And this is a Georgia product. This is made up in North Georgia. And of course, one of my best selling products is the blueberry barbecue sauce. I have two different types. I have the mustard base and the vinegar base. And these are amazing. This is made with real blueberries. You can see the specs. This is made with blueberry juice, and people love these. If you prefer to drink your blueberries, don't fret. Ann's got you covered. And then, of course, I've got blueberry juice, blueberry juice, blueberry pomegranate juice. This is made right here in Alma, Georgia. Alma also grows pomegranates. And we have blueberries and pomegranates, and it's made just down the road. So that's extremely good and healthy for you. Absolutely. And then I have just about anything you can imagine. I have blueberry salad dressing. I have blueberry pepper jelly. Um, there's blueberry cider. I have some sugar-free products for my diabetic friends. <clears throat> and then I, I have this is a product that I actually get out of Texas, but it is so good. Um, it's blueberry pecan honey butter. Can't find anywhere else that makes this. This is some excellent, excellent stuff. And then I have jams and jellies and syrups. And uh, one of my favorites is this one called the Butterfly. It's got pineapple, P 
pecans and cinnamon. And I tell people it's like eating a blueberry pie out of a jar. Like eating blueberry pie out of a jar. Oh, I just want to let that sit for a moment. Okay, whew. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, jams and jellies. <clears throat> now, the Blueberry Barn has many options to choose from, including some interesting and delectable combinations. Bayer is a really interesting jam. It's blueberry, elderberry, apple, and raspberry. And another one of my top selling is the Alma Traffic Jam. What a joke, because we have no traffic in Alma, but it's a play on words. And it's, the reason it's called Traffic Jam is it's blueberry, blackberry, and strawberry. So three jams come together to form Traffic Jam. This is a, a fun thing, but it's also extremely delicious. Besides candles, coffee, and barbecue sauce, the Blueberry Barn offers an even more expansive variety of blueberry knickknacks, accessories, and literature. Seriously, don't eat the candles. It's tempting, I know, I know. And I just began to en enlarge my, my product list by carrying Georgia grown products. And then I even expanded more, not only carrying food products, but carrying some, some blueberry jewelry, some blueberry books, things like that, just, just to promote what we grow here in Bacon County. And since I work part-time for the Georgia Berry Exchange, which is our membership organization for all the growers, it just seemed to work really well. So now, as part of that job, I go to schools and put on programs for blueberries, and I hand out blueberry activity books, blueberry pencils, bags of dried blueberries, just whatever, to teach the kids about blueberries in the state of Georgia. I'm sure people like being around you at parties. Right? Oh, she yeah. smells fantastic. I smell like a blueberry. And I normally dress like a blueberry every day. I wear something blue every day, so. Now you know why Ann Wilds is the blueberry queen of Alma. And even in the peach state, blueberries make a huge difference to our whole agricultural economy. We have out surpassed peach production here for quite a few years. And so blueberries bring in a tremendous amount of, of income for this state. And it just impacts the economics of Georgia tremendously. Not only the farmer growing it, but then when you think about the people who pick it, the people who pack it, the truckers who carry it all over, I mean, it, it's just a tremendous uh, economic asset to our state. Blueberries are so good for you. Bacon County used to be, um, somebody's coming in. Okay. Hello, okay. come in, dear. Uh, well, I'm gonna be on TV again. <laughs> I can tell I'm in work tonight. <laughs> That's all right. Did With a come? personality as sweet as her blueberries, you can see why Anne is such a beloved part of her community. And so is her husband, Albert Wilds. Albert is a lifelong Alma resident whose long farming career eventually brought him to blueberries. But I've been farming since, I've been farming full time actually. I started farming full time in 1968. Uh, there was a period of time in the, in the 80s that I did not farm. I, I opened a shop in Alma um, where I rebuilt diesel injection pumps and turbochargers. I did that for several years and then I taught diesel mechanics at a technical college for about 10 years. Retired from that, came back to the farm, increased the blueberry acreage a little bit, and so now I'm a full-time blueberry farmer. The blueberry barn itself carries a lot of Albert's family history. Well, my grandparents moved here in 1936. They came from Folkestone and uh, down in Charlton County and they moved here in 1936 and started farming and so it's been in the family since that time. Getting close to 100 years. The house itself was built, the best we can figure is somewhere in the late 1800s, 1880s, 1890s, somewhere. It was already here when they moved here. And we have, uh, we've, we haven't restored it but we've kept it from falling down. We've kind of put it back kind of like it used to be. And Albert was always supportive of Ann's divine blueberry aspirations. My wife got this, uh, the Lord gave her this notion, she says, in 2013 to open a blueberry barn. And by that I mean uh, it's a store that sells everything blueberry. And at that time, you, 
Bacon County was actually the blueberry capital of Georgia, but you could, you could hardly find a blueberry to buy because the blueberries from the farm goes to the packing house and then we market them through marketers. And uh, if a consumer wanted to buy fresh blueberries, it was hard to, hard to find them really. So we, she sells fresh blueberries in, the, uh, in her store from the farm along with jams and jellies and anything else blueberry that she can find. And it's been a, it just, just to help promote and make people aware of all the products that can be made with blueberries. And where did Ann's inspiration come from? Albert knows. We visited Maine uh, in 2012, I believe it was. And that's, Maine has the wild blueberries, which are different from ours, but they really promote them. Every store you went in in Maine has something to do with blueberries. If it's a dish, it has blueberries on it. And uh, we didn't have that down here. So that kind of got her thinking and uh, that, that why not? Why, why does all our blueberries have to be shipped, shipped away, you know? So why couldn't we do something locally? And that's, that's what we're trying to do, just make people more aware of products that can be made with blueberries. According to Albert, the blueberry world has its fair share of ups and downs. You, you just really have to love it in order to do it, because uh, there's a lot of nights you have to stay up to, to check your irrigation and check overhead protection if you're, if you're trying to frost protect or freeze protect, you know. Uh, I think that's some of the biggest challenges is uh, uh, finding, finding a way to, to to freeze and frost protect and justifying the cost of it. And of course the challenge that we face is always foreign imports. Mexico likes to put blueberries right in here on our market, in our market window. And uh, that's a challenge. Um, we contested that a few years ago, but we were not successful in, in the 201 investigation. So we're just gonna have to uh, promote, promote Georgia blueberries uh, that our berries are better uh, and better quality and uh, the food safety standards that we go through are uh, second to none so the, the consumer can be assured that they're buying a safe quality product when they buy Georgia blueberries. Let me tell you, Georgia Grown is definitely the best option. And here on Fork in the Road, you know, that's kind of our whole thing. And if you're looking for a delicious, portable superfood which is chock full of health benefits, blueberries are the way to go. They are one of the best uh, health secrets there is. Blueberries are so good for you. They help your eyes, they help your heart, they help your urinary tract, they, are, they lower cholesterol, they do so many amazing things. And they're even doing studies now to see if they can't lower uh, blood sugar. So there's a lot of research being done that will come out, I think, in the future, but we know how important blueberries are for you, and it's got to do with that blue color, that lovely blue color. It has something called anthocyanins in it, and that's where all of the health benefits come from. Do you know any other blue fruit? Hmm, probably can't think of one, can you? Eggplant's the closest. <laughs> yes, and that's more of a purple. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, blueberries are just so healthy, everybody should eat at least a cup a day. And that's so easy to get. I mean, we have blueberries, you can go to your grocer and find them, huh, 12 months out of the year. But you ought to eat them fresh, so whenever you can get them in your area, Florida, Georgia, Michigan, California, where, wherever you are, if you can get fresh, blueberries they are absolutely the best right off the bush is the best way to eat them but at least get local local american grown is the way to go we've had a very great time at the blueberry barn i gotta tell you the day just blew by but there's one more person we need to meet he's about eight inches tall he has blue skin and he's filled with cotton this is billy blueberry we actually have a storybook written about Billy Blueberry. One of the local blueberry farmers, Brandon Wade, wrote the little story about how Billy gets from the farm to the table. It's a fascinating little book. And we even had a local artist 
to draw all the pictures and it looks just like a kid's coloring book. So this is a great little, um, people buy this for their dogs to play with, they buy it for their babies. Uh, this, this is a neat little thing. You, did you see the little baby onesies that I have over there? Did you see the little onesie outfits for the baby? At the Blueberry Barn, there's an incredible amount of stuff for the blueberry lover and all of us, and proudly exemplifies the spirit of Georgia's blueberry capital, Alma. And if you want to bask in the glory of all the blueberry goodness this city has to offer, take a road trip next June and experience the Georgia Blueberry Festival for yourself. And while you're there, don't forget to pay a visit to Anne, the Blueberry Queen. <laughs> One thing I'd like to say about Alma before we say goodbye is that every year, the first weekend in June, we put on the Georgia Blueberry Festival. It's just a block away from this store, and we have arts and crafts, we have games for the kids, and you can get all the blueberry stuff you want at the Blueberry Festival. So I hope that when your viewers see this, perhaps they will come and visit us at the next Blueberry Festival. For more stories like this one, you can watch A Fork in the Road on GPB TV or anytime on the gpb.org website. That's where you'll be able to listen to and subscribe to this podcast or download it on your favorite podcast platform. I'm David Zelski. Thanks for listening to A Fork in the Road. Yeah.